And now I would like to ask Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey to come forward to share remarks on behalf of the City of Toronto. Love it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As Deputy Mayor, I've had the honor of representing the City of Toronto at a number of community events celebrations and grand openings over the last four months and it is just wonderful to be here with Councillor Malik and I will say I think most of those were in your ward there is a lot happening down here which is fantastic it has been an absolute pleasure to listen to the great stories of our city to share in its history and to feel the love the love of our city the love of its residents and the love here today the love between Naomi and Paul, the love between Mishna and Daniel, and that's why there's no better suited name for this two-acre urban oasis than Love Park. Love Park is a space like no other, from the signature heart-shaped pond defined by its red mosaic tile, to its lush tree canopy, gentle swirling pathway to much needed off-leash dog area, this park would not have been possible without the incredible community partners who worked to make this labor of love a reality. And I would like to extend a special thank you to Waterfront Toronto, CCXA, GH3 Architects, Do Incorporated, Arab and Ombrage, Somerville Construction, Waterfront BIA, who sponsored the nine wonderful bronzed animal sculptures and the movable furniture. I'm going to go try to find nine after this. And the Community Advisory Committee. And of course, let's give it up for the hardworking City of Toronto staff. But this park is just the beginning. There's an outpouring of love coming to the waterfront this year, including the opening of Leslie Lookout Park, delivered in partnership with Create TO. The Leslie Lookout will be a welcomed addition to the entrance of Tommy Thompson Park and include a public beach. The One Young Community Recreation Centre, just east of here, is showing the love to the South Core with its bright open spaces. And thanks to support from the Government of Canada, we've been able to show our shoreline some love with infrastructure to minimize high lake effect floodings, lakeshore erosion, and windstorm projects along the entire waterfront. This work and these investments are transforming Toronto's waterfront and will continue to enhance it as a top destination to live, work and play for years to come. Thank you for joining us here to celebrate the love and I would now like to introduce the fabulous, wonderful, great champion for Toronto, MP Julie DeBrusen, who is representing the Government of Canada to share a few words and to share some love. Hello, I'm Julie DeBruce and I'm the Member of Parliament for Toronto Danforth and big champion for parks in our city, all of the places that we get to come together and share time together. It, I think that it's so important to make our city a beautiful, livable place, to have spaces just like the one we have here. And so I'm always glad to be able to be here with the City of Toronto and show how we can work as great partners to make things happen. I'm going to avoid all the puns because it is so easy with a name like Love Park to just kind of come up. I, I know I'm going to be just kind of ripping them off in my mind as I'm biking home. But you know what? That's actually part of the fun. Like, isn't it fun to have like a fun space where we can share some time? A place where we can have some weddings later today. A place where we can come together and enjoy some whimsy in our everyday. And I really appreciate it. I'm here today, I'm actually here as a City of Toronto MP who loves my city, but I'm also here on behalf of Minister Philomena Tassi, who's the Minister for the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario. What a mouthful. But that's just shows all the work that she does. And there was $750,000 of Canadian federal funding that came to make this park happen. That kind of builds on a lot of other projects. You heard from some of, about some of them from Deputy Mayor. We are always there to work as a partner with our city, and it's really amazing to be able to see it. I love that we get to spend some time together here. I love that we even have a little bit of rain because we've needed that to keep things growing. And I love that all of you have shown up to help celebrate this day. So thank you so much. Enjoy this part. Thank you very much to 
Deputy Mayor McKelvey, to Julie DeBrusen, MP for Toronto Danforth for participating in this event to represent the Government of Canada. Our combined partnership on the waterfront is essential for the success of this park and for the many past and future projects that will be will have occurred and will be occurring. And I would like to now, I'm really honored to introduce the Chair of Waterfront Toronto, Stephen Diamond, to speak. Uh, thank you, Councillor Malik and uh, MP Drabusen and Deputy Mayor McKelvey and honoured guests. What a fabulous park this is. And even with a little bit of rain, it can't dampen the excitement that we have for this great public space that has been created. And I'm proud to say that this park today completes more than 106 acres of parks and public spaces that we've delivered across the waterfront, creating a vibrant and exciting space for visitors and residents and office workers in our core. And I particularly also want to thank the staff at Waterfront Toronto for leading this project through its completion and for your hard work in bringing this new park to life. It's an incredible transformation taking place across our city. But I also want to indicate that the community played an instrumental role. When you think about it, there was the former York Street Gardener off-ramp to this stunning place that is now here. And I want to thank them for their efforts in helping to revitalize our waterfront for everyone. The York Key Neighborhood Association and the late Councillor Pam McConnell should and would be very proud of the park they advocated so strongly for. And special attention was given to every part of this, including the sustainable park, to make this a thriving park for generations. And just by way of example, before the park could get going, there was 430 truckfuls of contaminated soil that was needed to be removed to create this park. And the benches that you see around the park are made from recycled ash trees. This can only come and happen when we all work together with our government partners with a determination to make a better city, a better province, and a better country. We are always better working together. And that is what the Waterfront Corporation is all about. Three levels of government working together to make the city a better place. And the end of this month marks the end of my term as the Chair of Waterfront Toronto's Board of Directors. And we believe that we've made significant strides towards our mandate. We finalized our project on Quayside, which will provide more public open spaces and hundreds of affordable housing units. The progress on the Partlands continues, one of Canada's largest and most complex infrastructure projects, and the flood protection work is on track to be completed in 2024. I am proud that my successor, who is chosen by the board, will be Jack Winberg. He served on the board for four years, and I'm sure that the corporation will be in good hands. I know it's beginning to rain, but all I'll say is we have a lot of exciting events happening in our future. I look forward to what's going to happen on Villiers Island, like Canada's first in Canada destination playground, and the rest of Villiers Island, which I believe will also be a leader in urban innovation across this country. This is great work, as I said, by all of us working together. I hope you'll enjoy it, and have a great day, and thank you very much. Yes, I do, but I can't. Thank you very much, Stephen, and all of those on the Waterfront Toronto team for being wonderful partners on this opening and on the many projects that we work on together. And like Stephen said, we won't let this rain uh, dampen our spirits and, and, um, and won't dampen the opportunity that we have here to recognize what an incredible journey it's been to get here. There are so many who have contributed their energy to making this extraordinary new public green space possible. And thank you. Can we give them all a big round of applause? I want to share a little bit about the story that started years ago here with the community and city council and a mayor that had a vision to reimagine how this space could serve the public and our growing neighborhoods. It's hard to believe, as Stephen mentioned, that not long ago we would have been standing under a part of the Gardner Expressway. Can you believe that? This was an ambitious vision, taking obsolete transit infrastructure, redesigning it for safer movement for everyone, and opening up the full potential of what was then called the York Off-Ramp Park back then. It truly deserves a new name now, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> 
It was a bold move that showed what is possible when we dream big and commit to building a city we can be proud of and a dazzling waterfront. As Steve rightly mentioned, it was the community that, that took this plan and through their leadership and their enthusiastic support, drove it through thoughtful re refinement through a community liaison committee process. The York Key Neighborhood Association and their leaders, Raz Mene Menezes and Ula Colgrass, were there from the very beginning, and they're here now. There's a wonderful photo that was shared with me of Braz and Ula with the late Deputy Mayor Pam McConnell in her office, mapping out the future that has now arrived and that we're standing in. Angelo Bertolis and Carolyn Johnson carried the torch with the community liaison meetings, along with many other representatives who have made this project what it is through their deep care and commitment. In particular, I want to recognize the Waterfront BIA's commitment to public space sh stewardship and their generous support for the movable furniture and those hidden animal statues that everyone's been talking about. They are incredible and thank you so much. As you might know, every great design needs inspiration and the report that initiated the environmental assessment to reconfigure the Gardner ramps had a now famous early sketch of a potential park by our own city urban design maestro, James Parak, who I understand is now a neighbor to the park, which is very exciting. Moving expressways and building an oasis doesn't happen without the skill and expertise of so many people, more people that we can name in this reign. But I do want to recognize people from across divisions who are pulling in the same direction to make this possible, from planning, real estate, environment, parks, forestry, and recreation, all needed to move things forward. And leading on the new space design is the incredible partnership we heard about between Waterfront Toronto and the City of Toronto and all their teams who have de delivered this space. Thank you to all of you. The partnership led to design competition that brought the best to us from around the world. The level of quality of the submissions was fantastic from all teams. But as you can tell where I'm going with this, we fell hard for Love Park, didn't we? Yes, that deserves a round of applause. The creative magic of Claude Cormier and Mark Halle and the CCXA team has done it again. Congratulations. <laughs> Through it all, it was late Deputy Mayor Pam McConnell who drove this project forward with her eternal persistence and care. Claude and Mark will recall how one of Pam's last acts of service was opening another one of their works. Which we do we know? The Dog Park Berksy Park, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrating all of our parks today. I see the same kind of joy here as from that moment and that product project, and I have confidence that she'd be proud of the work you have all done to bring this vision to a reality. I I can't wrap up until I, I do recognize my predecessor. Former Councillor Joe Cressy and the Councillor's team, some of who are, who are here, Brent Gilliard, Tom Davidson, Bush Ramir, who gave the project what we would call a big lift and pushed the project over the finish line, making important contributions to those always critical last phases. So thank you again for coming. This is now your space. It's our space. A green public oasis that makes a spectacular waterfront that will capture the heart and imagination of people from all over Toronto and beyond. I met a number of visitors today as well. A place that is for all of us to love. Welcome to Love Park and now let's cut that ribbon.